You wanted your fight? Now you'll get it. You don't want it. I want my men alive. This isn't going to help. But when the Sassanids are dead, you will see the value of sacrifice. The Sassanids do not stay dead. My father defeated them countless times. I have defeated them countless times, as have my brothers by blood and brothers in arms. And here we are now, still fighting the Sassanids, just as many of them as ever. Same battle, but further from home. If you can't kill them all in a single day, it's not even worth getting out of bed. Would you rather flee, Magister? I will take command, if that's it. Be quiet. You will lead the cavalry, what's left of them. This fight is upon us. We are the first and last barrier between them and the Empire. I will fight to the last not because I want it, but because the gods and the state require it. Ride out and destroy their war machines before they are in position. It's our only hope, and if anyone can do it, it's a madman like you. Yes, Magister. I'll take your remarks as a compliment, sir. And I won't return alive until those things are stopped. Seriously, don't die, General. Don't worry about me. I've got a deal with Mars going, sworn on this scar. I'll advise the rest of the men do the same then. are back for some more Fields of Mars. Last time we kept pushing the front line against the Sassanids, taking out their puppets, the Alakmids actually taking them out after claiming to do so in the episode before, and reaching Meshan, the all-important port settlement that allows us to kick the Sassanids out of their core in Mesopotamia. But while all that was going on, we were fighting a war against the Alamans far, far away. We scored an early victory against one of their armies, but they They've got so much stuff that there's a lot of work to do left on that battlefront, but first we have to deal with a Sassanid counterattack, four of their armies versus two of ours. The battle started with an attempt to bring down the enemy's large onagers. They have four sets of large onagers in their first army. I started by trying to do the thing where you just dodge around to make them waste ammo, but it wasn't really working because they have so many onagers and they're all firing at different times. Whenever you move, you end up in the line of fire of one of the other ones, so you can't just juke around and dodge shots like this. We started taking some pretty significant casualties. We had to just go in and try to attack them. We had to wait before we could even try that since the enemy's army needed to get out of the way, but eventually they were gone. We'd actually drained the ammo of two of the sets of onagers by that point. We arrived just too late to stop them from firing their first volley, which is tearing apart our front line here. If they had all those four onagers firing at us, this battle would almost be over already. They're super powerful and they're very good against units that are bunched together, like our test judos there. So it is completely essential that we take these onagers down at any cost. And there is going to be a significant cost because one unit of enemy slingers is just attacking this melee from a distance, killing both sides but we're going to be losing our cavalry here. We need to keep them alive long enough just to finish off these units because even if they rout and come back, they'll just go back onto the Onagers and keep firing as long as they still have ammo. We need to finish them off somehow. Varys is going to come over to try and help with that. Meanwhile, the battle on the front line will now get started, and we've seen how this goes. It's going to be pretty much your standard Sassanid battle. They just have tons of cavalry, and the AI just does a flank attack with them every time, so I've actually got half my army is just on the flanks in big echelons ready to stop this. Here's a nice mistake from me, I get rear attacked on my spears while trying to reform, didn't see this unit coming in so quickly. We can turn around to face those camels there, but this set of camels gets a really good charge. They charge into a unit of legionaries while they're moving, and in Attila, moving units are super weak against charges, even if they're sort of charging into the charge that's coming at them, and that means we lose almost the entire unit 
instantly, completely devastating. Those camels are so powerful. I think they do armor-piercing damage, perhaps even on their charge, so it just wipes things out, even things with really high health and armor like legionaries. On the other flank, more camels having a great time. They've just broken through immediately and are now wandering into our back lines. I think camels are the Sassanids' new favorite OP thing. They've really stopped bringing crossbow calves since I nerfed them, but I think the AI has worked out that camels are the next most OP thing, <laughs> so we're spamming camels instead. Now Varus is taking out the Slingers, so that's going to protect our cavalry, but it's a little bit too late. Only one legionary is still alive here, but heroically he is actually driving away the Onager crews and slowly killing all of them. His melee stats will be so much higher than these crews that even with just him on his own, he should be able to finish them off. He needs to shatter them, as I said, to actually complete that mission, so hopefully he'll manage to do it. We kill an enemy general on the front line. I don't think it's the enemy general. They have four generals, and it gives you the announcement for the first one that you kill, but it's the first one that came onto the field that actually applies the morale debuff, I believe, so we don't get the uh, general dead morale debuff on the enemy because of that kill which is unfortunate so it will just grind on maybe the real general will present himself to be killed later on now because the enemy were all bunched up i could use my large onages to start blowing up these enemy blobs i have to be super careful because if we hit our own men it's basically over here we don't want to break these testudos up so i'm just dropping shots manually by doing manual targeting to make sure we hit that one was danger close it actually broke at a studio a little bit and the enemy immediately <laughs> started trying to get through it with cavalry it didn't quite work though that is their general so at least we're getting him into melee so yes, lots of good targets for the large onagers here. They're going to get hundreds upon hundreds of kills attacking those blobs. Our cavalry have done their work against the enemy's large onagers and are making their way back. And our heroic legionary is still alive, <laughs> rushing back with Varus. And I'm glad to say he did make it back to our lines somehow. I really didn't think he would because he had to run through all of the enemy's horse archers and the foot archers indeed to get there. But they didn't switch targets onto him. He somehow got away with everything and will now make it back to the safety of the back of our army. So that's good, although he will actually just be forced to commit suicide after the fight because his unit's too small, so it doesn't technically matter, but a symbolic victory all the same. Legionary, come here. Yes, Magister. What happened to the rest of the men? What orders did you receive? The Legate ordered us to capture those catapults. The enemy were ready and most dead, the wounded are in the path of the enemy advance. It was, uh... What did the Legate do? Was he even there? He was behind us, but when the fighting started... I don't know. <sighs> okay, but how did you disable them on your own? Just luck, I suppose, Magister. Luck? <laughs> By Mars, perhaps. Legate Verus fancies himself to be an example of a true Roman, but I think you match it better. Return to the camp and get rested. You'll ride with me from now on, Praetorian. The enemy keep up the pressure on our center, and they're actually about to break through in one place. I managed to deploy some legionary defectors to plug the possible gap just in time, because the enemy did actually start pushing through just as we got into position. We were able to stop those cav getting into our back lines. So that's good. All we can do right now is just sit and allow the grind to go on, because although we have a lot of troops and even an advantage on the balance bar, we are locked down by the enemy's powerful ranged units. At least some of them are starting to run out of ammo and come in to die fighting our legionaries from the front. Eventually, after enough grinding, we actually did take out pretty much all of the enemy's infantry and a lot of their cavalry at the cost of a decent portion of our front line strength, but it is still holding. What's left out there are the enemy's reinforcement units coming on at the back of the map, which are mostly cavalry and ranged units, and all of the cavalry and ranged units that are already here, of which there are quite a few, keeping us completely locked down. And now that the enemy have cleared their front lines away 
away from ours, that means their cavalry will actually have an easier time because now they're not obstructed, they can do proper cataphract charges like this one right into our men. This wedge attack slams into a stationary testudo. The testudo formation gives them a defense against charges, so it doesn't completely annihilate them like that would against a normal unit. Most of our guys remain standing, it just does some damage. Now our archers are firing at those cataphracts annoyingly, probably hitting our own men there. So we just have to resist attacks like that. Not much we can do apart from, well, this, <laughs> to really, really carefully try and drop Onager explosives into those cataphract units to damage them, just to save some of the lives of our legionaries, as long as we are perfectly accurate, that is, of course. The unit next door is destroyed by a similar cavalry attack. Now our defector troops are going to try and hold the enemy. I've got some more legionaries behind them just in case they can't do it, which is decently likely. Here comes a big diamond attack from the enemy's camel cataphracts. They similarly can't completely obliterate us because of our testudo. It stops us from being overrun like the legionaries we saw earlier. But we'll still have a lot of trouble in the ensuing melee because the enemy are a heavy axe unit, perfect for fighting against legionaries. One thing we had going in our favour is that some javelineers came up and started throwing generally towards that area and probably hit a decent amount of their own camels with that attack and we were able to defeat that unit. Next up, some regular cavalry tried to charge our front line. Not going to do very much because they don't have the charge bonus they need. The Testudo will just stop them outright. And now we'll have a favorable melee. The Testudo also gives you increased melee attack against cavalry for whatever reason, so that will help out quite a lot. And still, the enemy's missile bombardment just going on, not really doing anything because of our Testudo. I, I like to imagine what this campaign would be like if I hadn't used stationary Testudo ever. We would have been completely destroyed in almost every battle, and this is no exception. We are using this Testudo to its full effect. This enemy cavalry unit tries to run across the face of the front line, routes and will now lose a decent amount of men trying to get away. And this cataphract charge targeted the wrong unit by the looks of things. They had to run through one of their own routing archer units to hit us, and that actually deflected a massive amount of that heavy cav charge's power. So that's great. If they'd just gone slightly to the left, they could have blasted through our entire army and got into our siege lines. Those siege weapons still being put to use by sniping against cataphracts wherever they're bunching up being super careful, but it is possible to get some decent hits, and because the cataphracts are highly armoured, they are super vulnerable to attacks that just ignore armour like these explosive rounds. So the grind's continuing. They're throwing in now pretty much the last of their melee cavalry, so all I needed to do at this point in the battle was resist this attack and uh, make sure our front line didn't crumble and no disasters came of it, and it looked like that was going to happen. We still have a lot of troops. They are just kind of stuck, as I said earlier, because of that huge crescent of enemy ranged units, an entire army's worth just sitting there firing at us constantly. And this, I think, is the last enemy unit here just being ground down by one of my legionaries. So we finally finished off the enemy's attacking force. They still have tons of ranged units and even some onagers at the back of the map that the AI fortunately forgot about and just left them not even moving or firing or doing anything. So that helped us out quite a lot. And really the battle was just about waiting at this point. The enemy can't damage us with their attacks as long as the Testudo is working correctly. And we did have a good day for Testudos, so... We are just resisting enemy fire and waiting for them to come in for these little melee attacks once they get desperate and out of ammo. This will do some damage to our men. Our units are so weak that they are vulnerable to even light cavalry charges. What's actually happening here is we've just got like four or five nearly destroyed units all standing on top of each other and just behind each other, uh, hopefully overlapping enough to resist enemy attacks and it kind of works out in the end. What I tried to do is pull everyone behind my reserve auxiliary palatinas. This was a terrible decision though, because as they ran away, we lost about 75% of our surviving troops on this end of the line, just to the ranged fire that hits them as they pull back behind this shield wall. So I think it would have been better to just leave them out there and take more losses from being charged. It probably wouldn't have been that much, but we've done it now. So they can now start moving back to our reserve area where I've just got this gathering of units that are really damaged and can't really do much more in the fight, including that legionary from earlier, by the way. He is now teaming up with Septimus and uh, all of our archers who were just thoroughly outclassed in the battle and were just annihilated right at the beginning, so I just uh, quit them from the engagement and hoped the enemy didn't find them at the back there. 
So here's what we're waiting for, the enemy's crossbow cav here I think it is just rushing into fight with some of our spears, very nice of them, although the crossbow cav are pretty good in melee as we've seen before. They actually, this particular unit, sacrificed themselves because they tried to run through our men, they got a movement order, I think to escape from these extra spearmen I was sending in to help, but uh, as we've seen many times before, moving while in combat just kills units. So. They were destroyed by that, and the final unit I actually took out by sending our archers forwards to shoot at them, because they kept skirmishing away rather than attacking us for some reason, so I had to do that, just to end the battle. It is a close victory, at least it wasn't a Pyrrhic victory, it did feel like that at times. We took an absolute hammering right across our front line throughout the fight, but we've done a lot of damage back to the Sassanids invasion force. Your Magister Militum, Septimus Gurgis, is pleased to report to the people of Rome and its territories that he has won a great battle in a distant land in the very heart of Persia, and that he wishes to dedicate this achievement to the people of the Empire and to Mars. The leader of our greatest enemy has been slain and his henchmen scatter into the mountains and deserts beyond the Empire, with no hope to ever threaten our restored Republic again. Furthermore, in celebration of this achievement, the Magister encourages all good men to practice with arms and armor daily, and support the Senate in their war against the Northern Barbarians. He wishes to see that he is not the only child of the Empire who respects the will of Mars. Let's take a look at those all-important results. Two units lost in our first army there, and actually no units lost in the second army. That was pretty good, so we'll be able to get a decent amount of our troops back. We did lose a large proportion of our total manpower, nearly half, but we defeated more than double on the enemy's side, and they lost a lot of full units, so a little bit more permanent the damage we're doing here. I noted our large onagers together got something like 2,000 kills or nearly that much, so very, very effective, those guys. And yes, we can see the enemy losing lots of units across all of their armies, although in the last one, they lost only one unit. That unit happened to be their High King, so that's nice, although it doesn't actually have any effect on things killing the um, royalty of enemy factions, because they just spawn new ones. But, you know, it's a moral victory. <laughs> we can take that home for ourselves. So they scatter, and we'll now have replenishment, hopefully, because we're in our own territory. But we've got another battle to face right after that, because the Huns are now starting to attack as I wondered when this would happen. And here they are with three armies, none of them full armies, so the balance bar isn't all that bad as they attack Severia here. We have a governor inside as well with some Praetorian cavalry, so that'll make things a tiny bit better than usual. And I did want to give this one a go, because the enemy armies aren't all that special, and we know the enemy is going to be a little bit silly with a lot of its cavalry, so we should be able to kill them by making them attack our spear walls here. First we'll have to tank some of their javelins as usual, again that stationary just judo making this battle winnable for us as we get rid of the enemy's most powerful weapons. Our cavalry are heading out of the town because I want to destroy these blisters. Your stationary just judo won't stop things from siege attacks so we do need to take them down just for safety. They have skirmish units nearby, it would be nice to try and take them out with our cavalry but so much of their skirmish component is mounted and our guys are slow that we're not really going to be able to do that. You can see I am trying there, but I quickly give up because that's just not going to go anywhere. And I ended up just bringing all the cavalry to wait around outside the town. There are too many horse archers inside to make any progress. We did get those ballistas at least. So no super point blank range stuff from them, although I think really the ballistas probably would have just glitched out. They tend not to work very well in siege assaults. Unfortunately, the enemy aggroed onto me a little bit. They sent some cavalry back to challenge my cav. I didn't want that. I wanted to just sit out here and be ignored so I could come in for an attack later when the opportunity arose. But some of the enemy army did turn back to face me, so I'm going to draw them out into the open and just do a regular cavalry battle with them on the open fields. Meanwhile, other cavalry units are doing what I wanted them to. They're just attacking our spears and they're going to be dying as a result. Here's another case where we just tanked a load of javelins, didn't take too much damage from it thanks to the Testudo, so now that enemy unit will be significantly less useful to them. 
I managed to detach a unit of scout equites from the cavalry battle to come and take out some of the enemy's archers. They ran quite far though while I was chasing them in the skirmish part of that little engagement, and they ran themselves into range of these horse archers who started shooting into the melee. So that's going to cause my men to die here pretty quickly actually. I think I ended up just quitting the engagement and trying to get out of there and losing half my men in the process because we were losing that thing pretty fast. On the front lines, the enemy are also losing things, as our spear troops are doing the work, but they are taking losses against all these attacks. They're not an especially good spear unit. This is just our generic unit that you can recruit anywhere, our equivalent of levies. So we are going to lose them eventually if enough cavalry attack them, but it's going to be a very good exchange, suffice to say. And we do get one of their generals there. I think it wasn't their actual uh, leading general, but a good start will take down some enemy officers because the Huns do have lots of high-level officers officers in this fight. Now I've got my Praetorian cavalry who are going to come in here to try and rear attack the enemy's blob attacking our spearmen. I thought we might be able to get some routes going to turn this fight around because Praetorians are very powerful, will outclass the enemy's cav and the rear attack um, morale shock might make this super easy. It didn't turn out to be like that. We came in, we did route one of the three units here but it was the one that was almost dead already the others aren't going. It's because the enemy's general isn't actually dead. Perhaps I was fooled by the announcer saying that he was there. The general that counts as being in command isn't dead, so there's no uh, morale penalty from that. And now our Praetorians are actually in big trouble because these slingers coming up behind them can attack the rear of the unit and uh, slinger attacks count as armor piercing like crossbow attacks. So Praetorians aren't protected by the high level of armor in cases like this. So I tried to get out of there to avoid just losing the unit. But of course, <laughs> getting out of a, an engagement with cavalry is always difficult and it just doesn't really happen. We lose tons more of the men to more missile fire as we try to escape. And the fact that moving units just die means we lose pretty much all the unit actually just getting away from the enemy's cav who pursued us. We lost not the general himself or the governor, but we did lose almost all of our most powerful unit. That's not a good sign. Father, I apologize for surprising you with this, but I won't be able to stay in Constantinopolis as you so politely requested. You see, there is a quite undeniable flow of refugees coming from the north. The Huns are at it again. The Senate and even the local merchants, good chaps, have provided me with a rather sizable sum of money that I intend to use to raise a legion or two. I'll stay well back from the fray, I promise. Action makes a man more characterful, do you not agree? I won't be cheap, only the best quality stock for my army. Very important. I'll be fine, really. I've got that Magister Militum blood in me, after all. Half of it, anyway. I still wonder where the other half came from, by the way, if you have the time. Now that our mobile element is mostly out of the picture, we're going to have to just rely on the grind to try and win this battle. We can't really do anything, we just need the enemy to defeat themselves by attacking us and losing. Their cavalry will manage to do that, attacking our spears, but these pikes will have an easier time fighting in the choke point with their pike wall right up against us. We'll just have to hope things go our way. Over time, things did seem to go okay, the balance bar shifting in our favor now as more and more enemy units killed themselves against our spears and then I deployed what I had left of my cavalry, a few Praetorians and some scout equites to attack one of the two main enemy blobs from the back and the hope was that we could route something here. There are some decent spears in there and we started taking losses on our calf pretty much straight away so it was a tiny bit dangerous but I wanted to just hold out and really try to get that route going. It did happen pretty soon so that's lucky for us and it actually causes a chain route among the rest of the enemy troops and suddenly we win. So that went pretty well. They were just about to break through to the capture point so we just about did it. It's a close victory in the end and that's a victory we really needed because the Huns are going to be a massive problem when stacked on top of the Alamans in this general area of the world so we need to resist the Huns without really using any of our armies since they're all needed to do other things. 
So we did lose a unit there, but nothing important because it's only garrison. The enemy losing units as well. And I believe because the Huns are glitched in this campaign, they actually can't recruit anything. So every unit we kill is actually a unit that's going to be gone for good. Actually, a little bit closer to a realistic mechanic here. So we actually can get decisive battles against the Huns. Once we win, we are going to have an advantage over them. It's pretty nice. Hopefully, we'll be in a position to finish them off as a result of the losses they took there. But another battle is upon us, jumping to another part of the empire. It's Trapezos. I've got an army inside, a really terrible army that I recruited just to have some sort of cheap solution to the possibility of being attacked here. And looks like we're going to have to use it. We've got two armies coming in, one from Aria and one from Aran. Lots of generic trash spears and lots of the traditional eastern units like mounted archers and skirmishers. So we'll just see the start of this battle. I'm setting up to defend our little area in the center. Going to use our small walls to our advantage, hopefully. We've also got a garrison fleet out there, which is now sailing to sit behind the enemy's army. And I'll just try and look for something to do with them. And we've barricaded up one of our entrances with javelinmen to try and do the classic javelin barricade trick. The first bit of action in the battle, though, is going to involve these mercenary Persian scouts out here. They are a fast and light horse archer unit but I'm going to use them for a melee attack and a very dangerous one at that. I want to defeat that onager that's sitting on its own out there but while going towards it some units decided to chase these scouts including camels so if they encounter us we'll be in enormous trouble there's nothing we can do against them so I just use rapid advance gives you plus 50 percent speed a very large bonus there so we can charge past the camels into the onagers and just try to take them out we're going to sacrifice this unit in an attempt to stop those onagers because they'll get hundreds of kills in a siege attack since we're all just sitting still we do need to get rid of siege weapons like this so we managed to rout the enemy's onagers but the camels then come in and our mercenary unit there is just gone probably not all that bad because i usually disband mercenaries after battles anyway so it's not too much of a sacrifice there They've got more onagers though, coming in with the reinforcements, two sets of onagers in fact, so I need to take these guys down as well. They were firing not at the nearby cavalry as I first thought, but at my distractionary unit. I didn't think this actually worked when I was fighting the battle, but apparently it did. I sent this unit of mercenary Persian brigade to just run around outside of the town hoping to kite some enemies away, because they're such a weak unit, they have no use in actual fighting. So I thought if some of the enemy just chased me to the edge of the map or something, then I'll just weaken them a little bit. And it seems it did do the job in uh, taking some onager fire for me. So our cavalry dodge around the enemy's reinforcement army. We had to fight some horse archers who we managed to trap up against the line on the edge of the map there. But after that, we'll have a clear run to take down those onagers and that just makes the siege defense all that much easier. The actual fighting is now getting started on the front line and it's not going to be very favorable for us. We've got our spearmen fighting the enemy's mace infantry. We'll just be annihilated there. But I do have my siege ships. You've come into the harbor here to fire flaming shot into the back of the enemy's formation. So this is my somewhat dangerous attempt to thin the enemy's quality infantry out. If we can kill the uh, the mace guys, then the spear guys won't be too much of a problem. So I'm just focusing them down with siege fire, even if there is a bit of a risk of killing our own troops there. And we did manage to take out those onagers on the edge of the map. We have to dance around now because the enemy's horse archers are coming after us and we don't really have a way of catching them. So the grind will now continue on. The fight's going to st get started properly and we've given ourselves a good start but no guarantees. And we're starting to take really large losses to the enemy's slingers and javelineers. And that's going to continue throughout the fight. We'll see a few more highlights from this battle in the next episode. The previous Roman Empire had been unable to continue war with their eastern rivals and the barbarian frontiers at the same time. Now the new one was encountering the same difficulty. While the Persians were regarded as the more important target, given their historic conquests of Roman territories, the barbarian kingdoms were the ones in a position to tear out the empire's heart. A few hundred miles of barely defended land lay between Rome itself and the countless thousands of experienced warriors and raiders in the Alps, held back only by untested militia and unreliable commanders. It was a dangerous imbalance, and one that eventually would become impossible to ignore at the price of countless Roman lives. 
That's it, thanks for watching and thanks to all the officially Devin patrons. We'll have to deal with the fact that there are many powerful armies on our border and getting rid of them isn't going to be free in the next episode of Fields of Mars.